Hi everyone, this is Sam Hancock with Inside Sales. I'm a client success manager, and today we're going to be talking about best practices with our software and how to really get the most out of the tool and, and how your reps can be focusing and being able to close more. Uh, before we get too far into kind of the training part of this, I want to just quickly talk about kind of what our mission here is at, at Inside Sales, and that's really to apply the science to sales. And what that means is, is that for a long time within the sales industry, we talked a lot about gut feelings and creating relationships and and using our intuition to make sales. Well, what we are trying to do is to use data and to use logic behind who should be the best person to, to follow up with, when should we be following up with them, who is the best lead to be contacting, and things of that nature. And what we have found as we start going through and, and we're working with our clients and companies is you know, there are three basic problems that all of them face. One is, who do we contact? Again, going back to the, the gut feeling part of it is, you know, we, we say, hey, I think this person might be a, a good person to call, so I'm going to call them and call them and call them, when in reality, they may not be the best person to contact at that time. It may be somebody totally different, but we waste a lot of effort and energy calling maybe calling a lot of wrong leads. The second thing is, is when to contact them. So if we know who to contact, we also need to know when to contact them. We have a lot of data that shows that there are good times to call people and bad times to call people. For example, in the B2B space, generally what we find is from eight to nine in the morning and from four to five at night, contact rates tend to go up and people tend to answer the phone a lot more. So if we are a sales rep that is working in the West Coast and when we get in the office in the morning, commonly what we see is a lot of reps like to work with their East Coast stuff and kind of work their way back to the West. But the data shows that they actually should start with their West Coast leads before they're dialing anybody else because that's when contact rates are the highest. The third thing that we find is daily roadblocks. And we all experience these from time to time, particularly as we use things like Salesforce or our inside sales CRM system. We have to log tasks, we have to log events, we have to log activities after we make phone calls or send emails. And that stuff takes time. For example, most sales reps will, or BDR reps will try to make somewhere between 50 to 100 dials in a day. Even if they make just 50 dials in a day and they have to log an activity for each one of those dials, that usually takes at least a minute to do and that's another 50 minutes out of their day that they're doing these administrative things and not actually selling. And you're not paying them to do what they do best and you're really just paying them to log information into your system. So these are the three challenges that Inside Sales is, is trying to fix when we talk about applying science to sales. So again, the classic sales problem is that we have our best leads close at a higher rate and our worst leads don't close at all, right? But what we find as we work with companies is, is that their number of prospects are inversely related to their close rates, right? We have more of the worst leads and less of the best leads. What we also see is that we apply almost kind of an equal effort across all of these leads because, again, we're using that gut feeling and we're just dialing through a list and trying to see if we can, we can catch something and get lucky. What we want to do is, is that we want to shift our focus from having a balanced effort across the board to essentially going to a more of a prescriptive communication and saying, let's just focus on these best leads so that we can get better close rates out of our reps. What we want to do is we want to get you the best leads at the right time. I mentioned before, right, that we have data that shows that there are good days to contact people and bad days to contact people. So you'll see that there's actually a 49% difference of calling somebody on a Thursday versus a Tuesday. Our data shows that basically a lot of people on Mondays and Tuesdays, they're in company trainings, they're doing company meetings, they're kind of planning out their week, so they're really not available to take phone calls. Whereas in Wednesdays and Thursdays, they're a little bit more free. They're usually sitting at their desk going through their, their tasks that they need to complete throughout the week, so they're much more likely to answer the phone. Same thing with best times, right? I mentioned before that from 8 to 9 and from 4 to 5 are when contact rates go up. And they're not just going up by 5, 10, 20%. There's actually a 164% difference of calling somebody from 4 to 5 as there is from 1 to 2. This is uh, attributes to a number of different things, but what we tend to see is, is that at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, 
We see a lot of people who are sitting at their desk. They're kind of either starting out their day and seeing what they need to do, checking their calendar, responding to any urgent emails. And at the end of the day, they're kind of wrapping it up. They're sitting at their desk and, and they're much more likely to answer that phone call rather than being in meetings or talking with other people and, and being in and out of things. So how do we accomplish all of this within the Inside Sales tools? We have a number of different tools that help you increase contact rates, help you increase effort, help you get the best leads in front of your reps and, and get them to dial through those. The way that we do this is through two, two different tools really. Is, is One is through the click to call and one is through our power dialer. The differences between the, these are, are pretty stark and you know I always encourage the companies that I work with to understand that to be successful with our system you have to have high adoption with the power dialer. Now what we find is is that companies generally get trained on the click to call first, they get up and running on the click to call first because it's a little bit easier to adapt and it's it's right there in your sales force, but what you'll find is is that with the click to call you're really limiting your opportunities to you know, increase effort, increase contacts, increase conversations and ultimately increase your sales. The click to call does have some really great things about it. So let me show you a little bit about how it works. The situations that I would want to use click to call in is, you know, if I have a one off dial. So I get in in the morning and I know that I need to call Lindsay Burgess. So what I would do, I would go in, I would find her Salesforce record and I would go into her profile. And when I'm ready to make that phone call, all I need to do is to click on her number. Now what will happen is, is that my phone will ring and I'll pick it up and it'll automatically start calling out to Lindsay. Now what you'll see here in my settings is that I actually, my station phone number is an 801 Utah area code. However, when I'm calling Lindsay, my caller ID will show up as a 248 area code to match Lindsay's. This is our local presence feature. It helps increase your contact rates. In fact, companies who use us generally see about a 30 to 40 percent bump in contact rates by utilizing local presence. Again, getting you more conversations so that you can get more sales. Now let's say that Lindsay doesn't answer the phone and I want to leave a voicemail. Now what we find with a lot of companies is is that They'll leave voicemail after voicemail after voicemail, and generally they're always the same kind of similar prospecting voicemail or a follow-up voicemail, and that takes time. If I made 60 dials in a day and I had a 5% contact rate, that generally means that I'm leaving about 55 voicemails in the day because they didn't pick up the phone. What happens is, is that each voicemail I'm taking about 30 seconds to, to a minute to do. So. 55 voicemails, 30 seconds apiece. We're looking at somewhere between 25 to 30 minutes in our, in our day that we're spending just leaving a voicemail. Now that may not seem a lot on a one rep level basis, but when you have maybe 10, 15, 20 reps in a given day who are leaving, you know, you're spending 25 to 30 minutes a, a day leaving a voicemail, that can really add up and a lot of productivity can be lost. So within our tool, we can actually go ahead and leave an automated voicemail. So I'll show you how to create these a little bit later, but essentially what you, you can do is you can click on leave voicemail and you can have a number of different automated voicemails that you can send out at any given time. So once the beep hits and you start when you want to record your message, you can go ahead and click on that voicemail. It'll automatically leave it. It'll disconnect us from the call as you see here and then down below we can disposition this call to say I left a voicemail. Now this is also going to save us time because once we disposition this call it's going to create an activity for us on this lead record and it's automatically going to go in it's going to say that we left a voicemail it's going to give us you know when we called them and we can even go in and if we had talked to them we'll have call recordings we'll have a number of different things a lot of information that we can access again automatically created your reps won't have to go in and create these every single time, saving us time so that we can make more calls, be more productive, make more sales. Now, let's say at the same time, we also want to send Lindsay a, an email. What we can also do is that we can send these emails. So very similar to the voicemail, we can have templates created that we can drop in quick email templates to our leads and it'll automatically populate them with merge fields so that it'll show their first name, it can personalize it towards them and make it easier for us. Once we hit that send feature as well, it's going to automatically create an activity so that we don't have to go in and log that. 
The great thing for you is that not only is it saving your reps time to make them more productive, but it's giving us a lot of reporting on our end as well so that we can look at the analytics behind what we're doing. We can see things like how many emails it takes to get a contact or how many phone calls it takes to get an appointment. So that's kind of the, the, the general aspect of the click to call. Again, it is a great tool. There's a lot of time saving things in there. It will help you increase your contact rates by using local presence. But ultimately, it's not going to blow your ROI for our tool out of the water. It will definitely, you'll definitely see a bump. But what we really want to focus on is through our power dialer. Our power dialer is another way that we can dial through. But instead of doing one off phone calling like the click to call is, what we can do is use it through list dialing essentially. Uh, we have two different types of lists. One is what we call a domino list and one is what we call a seek list. Now the differences between these two lists are a domino list is a static list. What that means is, is if I were to run a search to find everybody in San Francisco that has a lead status of new, and let's say that returns 100 people, once I start dialing through that list, I can't necessarily go back and start from the top of that list again. I have to kind of dial all the way through before I can recall those people. Now the other thing is, is that once I dial through, that list is, is gone and I can't use it anymore. So I have to recreate that list every single time I want to refresh it. Also, I mean, you know, marketing every single day is trying to generate leads for us and they're inputting stuff into Salesforce. Let's say they happen to generate a lead that's in San Francisco and it's marked as lead status new. If I was using a domino list and I was dialing through and it was taking me a while to get through that, that list isn't going to automatically just pull that lead in for us. Again, if I wanted to get those newer leads each, sing each day, I would just have to go in and recreate that list constantly. A domino list is generally good for companies who are following up on webinars, following up on trade show leads, where you can come in, you can find those leads real quickly, and you can just leave a quick follow-up voicemail, or get just if you get in touch with them, you can say, hey, I'm just following up on this webinar, I want to know if you were interested in learning more. Also, what we commonly see them used for, and usually kind of the best practice around it is, let's say you are going to a trade show, and the sales rep who's going to be there reaches out to your BDR reps and says, hey, I want you know a few appointments while I'm there, make it as productive as possible, can you set me up a couple? I can go in, pull a list of people who might be going to that conference, and dial through that and then I don't need to worry about it anymore because I'm not going to dial those people again in terms of being related to that conference. Now a seek list is what we call a dynamic list and what that means is is that I can create a seek list and if we use that same example of you know people in San Francisco with the lead status new well if tomorrow marketing finds a new lead that's in San Francisco what will happen is these seek lists refresh on an hourly basis it'll constantly be pulling in new leads that fit the criteria that you set forth that, that you want to contact. The other great thing about a seek list is that it allows us to kind of answer those two questions, who to contact and when to contact them. So instead of having your reps go out there and kind of willy nilly just say, hey, I want to call this lead and now I want to call that lead and not having really any data or logic behind it, what we can do is that we can build that logic out for them and really automate their day. I know it sounds weird, but the reps who are have their day automated for them and they were kind of taking that human thinking out of it, they tend to be a lot more successful because they're not spending so much time thinking about who they should be dialing next and it's automatically presented for them. And generally, as a sales manager, as a sales ops guy or a VP of sales, you probably know a little bit more about what is a successful lead and what is not a successful lead. So if we were to go into one of these seek lists and we can kind of see a little bit about how the logic is set up, but what you'll notice down here at the bottom is that they function off of time block queries. And basically what this is saying is, is from 8 to 9 a.m., I want to focus on a specific group of leads. So if I were to go in here and click on edit query, this is where the filter logic will come up. So in this particular one, we kept it fairly basic, but you know we're focusing on leads and we're focusing on a lead status new. And then also we're focusing on the Pacific time zone. So again, I'm a rep on the West Coast. According to our data, I wanna focus from eight to nine on West Coast leads because my contact rates will go up. I've marked this one as my greatest priority. From eight to nine, West Coast leads, a lead status new. Now, let's say I only have five or six of those and I'm probably gonna get through those within 20 or 30 minutes. And I don't wanna run out of leads. 
Well, what I can do is after that, I can create another time block query down here that says, hey, from eight to 12, I also wanna focus on my Midwest hot leads. So they have a lead rating of hot and they're all in the Midwest. Just to reiterate, my first priority is West Coast, but once I run out of those, I wanna to go to these Midwest hot leads. You know, after I focus on those, I wanna to go to my next time block query and so on and so forth. So we can essentially prescribe throughout the day what leads your reps should be focusing on and what leads they shouldn't be focusing on. And the nice thing is, is that once we've got this all prescribed out and everything looks good, your reps day becomes a lot more simple and a lot more focused. So if I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. So if I'm a rep and I'm getting in for the day, essentially what, we did, what I would do is I would sit down, it's eight o'clock, I grab my cup of coffee, I sit down at my desk. Instead of thinking, okay, who should I be calling next? What should I be doing? Let me go look at my task in Salesforce and see kind of what I have on the docket today. All they need to do is they come into their seek list and they click launch. So I launch my seek list and it automatically pulls up the very first lead that I need to be dialing. Again, I'm not wasting my time trying to figure out who should I, should I be dialing next. It's already ready to go, lock and loaded. I'll go ahead and I'll click on the dial button up here uh, you'll see that it's using local presence up here, like you saw on the click to call. Also, you'll see other things, right? We have our lead voicemails, our automated voicemails. We also have our send email functionality as well. Once I've called those people, I can disconnect. I can leave my voicemail down here and or say that I left my voicemail, I hit save and next, and the next lead will automatically pop up for me. I hit dial again. Again, this increases our efficiency. It'll help us increase our productivity as well so that we can make more dials, hopefully have more conversations, and ultimately make more sales. Now, when we talk with a lot of people, you know, when they're using this power dialer, when they get into the power dial on this page, a lot of times they, there's a lot of hesitancy. It doesn't look like Salesforce. And so sometimes we see user adoption sometimes struggles. If that's the case, and if your reps are feeling that way, we actually do have a feature within the click to call that gives you the power dialer functionality. If you go into your settings tab up here, you can go ahead and select on from your dialer list, your seek list that you wanna call from. And then once we have it, we can hit save and this next record button, what it'll do, it'll bring up the lead that we're supposed to be dialing. And it gives us that power dialer functionality, but it's within the Salesforce interface. Everything that you saw and you loved about the, the power dialer, you still have functionality for. So you can click here, you get your local presence, you have all your left voicemail features and everything like that. Once we hit disconnect, all I need to do is hit next record and it'll automatically bring up that next lead for us. So it'll give us that power dialer functionality, but it's in the click to call. It's a little bit more friendly for users to use and a great way to, to help you increase user adoption. The last thing I just wanted to point out was how do we create a voicemail? So if we go into the inside sales tab up here and we go to manage voice messages, this is where we can create those automated voicemails. We can hit create new voice message. And once we hit create message, very similar to how we receive a phone call, our phone will ring, there will be a tree recording prompt, and we'll go ahead and press one to leave a new voice message. Once you leave it and hang up, it'll automatically be attached to this record, and then it'll automatically populate into your click to call and into your power dollars so you can start utilizing those. That has been kind of a best practice overview, user training of how to use the inside sales tools. Just a reminder, please come back to our community site. We'll be constantly updating with new videos and new content to learn more about our system. And if you do have any other additional questions, you can also feel free to call into our support line at 866-593-2807.